Next, join me to welcome on stage Mr. Mark Birch, Global Startup Advocate AWS, to deliver his keynotes. Welcome and greetings. I'm going to do one quick thing here. It's kind of a little bit of a habit of mine. I take a nice little selfie with the audience. Folks listening, hello, folks. If you wave, wave. Hello, thank you. So, I really appreciate the time that I have to share with you today here at this wonderful conference, Telecom Review Summit. And I'm really pleased to be here because I'm in a room with innovators. And I want you to recognize that we are all innovators in this room bringing the next generation of technology and customer experiences to, a, to an audience across the region. And that's something to be incredibly proud of. And one of these technology innovations, which we're talking about quite a bit in recent years, is this thing called the metaverse. Now, a little bit about myself. My name is Mark Birch, global startup advocate at AWS. So what that means is I help startups to understand the different programs and services that we offer to allow startups to build, grow, and scale faster. I've been a software developer. I've been the founder of an HR tech company, author of a book called Community in a Box on community building. And before AWS, I was at Stack Overflow, the world's largest repository of programming knowledge in the world, where I ended up building from the ground up their SaaS business. And if you wish to connect with me on any of my social channels, you can scan the QR code and would love to connect with you. I want to take you on a journey, though, of what this metaverse really is about. What are some, some of the challenges and how we together in this room, both from an AWS perspective as a cloud provider, as well as all of you that are supporting telecom industry initiatives, startups, innovation labs, how we can come together to deliver to deliver this interesting customer experience called the metaverse. But I always think it's important to start with some definitions first, right? You may have some ideas of what metaverse is. Maybe you read this book called Snow Crash that was published 30 years back. Maybe you have the references of pop culture, like from movies such as Ready Player One. And with any nascent technology, we always have these different opinions about what the metaverse really is, but I think the best and most accurate definition is one provided by Matthew Ball, who essentially said that the metaverse is a 3D version of the internet and compute at large. And this means creating a space that's interactive, immersive, hyper-realistic, comprising of the virtual world itself, the physical gateways to get there, and the infrastructure. And those last two I'm going to focus this presentation on. Now, you may have had your own experiences with the metaverse. Maybe you recognize Second Life, you've heard of that. Maybe your kids are playing Roadblox. And those are metaverses. And over the past, particularly decade, we've seen the coming together and the evolution of a number of different technologies that make the metaverse real today across things such as blockchain, IoT, cloud compute, artificial intelligence, machine learning, all those that are creating this inflection in time right now where the, where the metaverse can be realized. And when we say the opportunities in the metaverse, how large are we actually talking about? And obviously there have been a few presentations so far today and yesterday on the metaverse, but it's estimated that the metaverse is a hundred billion market today. How did we get there? Think about virtual goods. 54 billion has already been spent last year on virtual goods. At the height of the NFT market, it was worth $40 billion. You may not recognize or under know that there's 60 billion messages that get sent across universes like Roblox today. And by some estimates, Berkshire Hathaway says this is going to be a, a trillion dollar market by 2030. But I think it woefully underestimates the opportunity because if you look at what the, just the Asian metaverse alone, this continent, there are some analysts that are saying it's going to be an eight trillion dollar market opportunity by 2030. And that's an incredible amount of opportunity. And why does that exist today, particularly here in the Asian continent and the Middle East? It's because when you look at smartphone adoption, 
there's over 90% smartphone adoption. That's a key gateway into the metaverse. And organizations like Chainalysis have studied this space and provide reports where they are looking at different markets across, whether it's here in Dubai, in Singapore, around crypto, whether you talk about Thailand, Philippines, India, where gaming is big. These are massive burdening industries that are coming about because of the metaverse. And it's not just gaming, it's not just crypto and blockchain. There's also rampant consumer interest. 49% of consumers have already expressed interest in the metaverse. So there's a massive untapped opportunity across many different industries and verticals. Let's unwrap this a bit. So when we think about the, the customer itself, and we always want to work backwards. That's something that Amazon, we're very much about, is working backwards from the customer. You work backwards from those experiences. And they're being driven by new models, new relationships, new ways of transacting that is all being driven by what we're going to call here the spatial compute layer. And the spatial compute layer has specific requirements around the scale in order to allow us to have and deliver these rich experiences to end customers. And that requires an incredible amount of compute power that's technically complex. And that's why we also have to think about infrastructure in driving any sort of metaverse capabilities. And when you think about the, the spatial compute layer, really we need to talk about the spatial data repository that's being generated, where upwards of 572 zettabytes, zettabytes of data will be generated by 2030, 10x the amount of data that we're working with today. And where 80, or what, 58% of that data is gonna be processed and consumed at the edge. And all of this data that's being generated is creating a flywheel effect. Because now that you have this rich data on experiences, it's driving models that you're creating and managing that then get built and deployed out across various different channels. And when you engage more and more customers and collect more data, it informs those models. But unfortunately, there's a lot of challenges and roadblocks that come towards trying to deliver fully on this experience. First, when you try to create and maintain or manage these, the spatial data layer, you have to think about how to translate and optimize the data for these 3D spaces. Then, in terms of building and operating, you got to have an ecosystem of providers that can support the creation of applications and experiences. So, let's look at some of these in more detail. So, first, let's look at the target, the, deployment of this out to the channels. And we generally are talking about three different experiences, right? We have the 3D web, which is gonna be the, the gateway that most of us experience, this 3D world. Then we have augmented reality, or AR, that converges the physical world with the digital spaces. And then we have VR, what we're most familiar with in terms of the headsets and virtual rooms where we can play and organize and collaborate. And there's implications here from a business point of view because we actually have use cases today that we're seeing out there from an AWS perspective when we look at our customers that run across multiple different areas within an organization where you can have practical experience in developing metaverse, uh, metaverse applications from the perspective of all the way from like design and engineering reviews to supply chain looking at digital twins to th rethinking how we do training how we think about sales engagement, how we think about the end user consumer experiences and metaverse. There's many opportunities to drive new and interesting use cases, but this is why thinking about the architecture and infrastructure is so critical, because it's not about the use cases that we see today, but it's about the use cases that are gonna come down in the future. And Amazon and AWS, we've been focused on how do we deliver the broadest and deepest set of technology in the cloud compute space. Today we have over 200 fully featured managed services across compute, storage, networking, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, IoT, robotics, all these different areas where we're providing support for customers today. And we continue to do this not only in terms of innovating faster than any other cloud provider with 3,000 features released in 2021 alone, but continuing to think about how do we take these services as building blocks to create the spatial compute layer and delivery mechanisms. 
So on the one hand, it's about where, where's the compute sitting? Is it sitting in our data centers? We can also think about this from a hybrid perspective and delivering on-premise capabilities as well through our, through our outposts and through our snowball devices. And then at the other end, think about the delivery of this rich dynamic experiences through IoT devices, streaming services, and AR, VR devices. And we gotta do this from a global perspective as well. From the very get-go, we were thinking about how to scale what we do globally to provide low latency capabilities to drive these experiences. Because if you think about the end user perspective, if a metaverse is slow, choppy, inconsistent, they're not gonna adopt. So we've been thinking from the get-go how to deliver these experiences and that single digit low latency uh, millisecond delivery time so that the responsiveness from an end user perspective is rich, crisp, and engaging. And so we've built out infrastructure, actually the numbers here have actually increased uh, over the past couple of months, where now we have 30 global regions covered, including two here in, in the region, in Bahrain, as well as in the UAE that we just launched back in end of August. So we have 30 global regions, we have 96 availability zones, and we have over 410 points of presence to provide low latency delivery. And we also gotta think about these building blocks in terms of how are they actually building out the solutions for the metaverse. And I won't get too like, deep in the weeds in the technology, but if you are familiar with AWS, you may recognize some of the names here of our services, like Amazon EC2, which is our core compute platform. We also have services like EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Services, that allow you to orchestrate your business logic across a number of different deployment options, whether it's in our data centers, hybrid, on-premise, all using one single plane of glass. There's services such as CloudFormation that allow you to take all that richness of the architecture you're building and to be able to deploy it much more effectively and efficiently through code. Amazon SageMaker is one of my favorite services because this allows our customers to build incredible machine learning models and provide that flexibility and to manage that pipeline to deliver that rich experience. And then as you think about not only the development of your architecture and your applications in the metaverse, but also being able to optimize at the edge. So think about services around IoT, such as Greengrass or RTOS that are providing that and delivering that rich experience at the edge. And then how to deploy that. And one of our services I like to talk about quite a bit is AWS Wavelength that allows our customers to deploy a lot of these rich experiences across the edge, leveraging 5G. And this is, again, the story where we work with our customers, we work with our telecom partners, leveraging the cloud as the engine to drive all this. And we've been doing this already today with some fairly notable customers that you may recognize here. I'll highlight a few, uh, Volkswagen Group, but even more interesting, Vara, which is a 3D headset provider. And they are leveraging our uh, best-in-class graphics instances today to deliver real-time graphics, which is so critical from a user perspective. If you're thinking about that 3D headset and trying to create an immersive experience. And from a, the perspective of both Volkswagen and Vara, what they really appreciate was the fact that they can actually have this rich set of core infrastructure that they do not have to build themselves. They can focus instead on building value and driving value and engagement with their customers. And we're also partnering with the leaders in the metaverse space. So companies such as Meta, Epic Games, that's the developer of Fortnite, they are partnering with AWS because they recognize that we can help them innovate at faster cycles, not only through our infrastructure, but also through the partners that we support that are helping our customers along this journey, such as Brio or Hexa3D or Obsess. So you may be thinking, okay, well, how can I, as someone here in the audience, whether you are a startup, an entrepreneur, whether you're a telecom executive, whether you are somewhere in an enterprise, how can startups get started on this journey in developing in the metaverse and leveraging our spatial compute capabilities? It starts with Activate. AWS Activate's a program for education, support, targeted offers, as well as cloud credits 
to help you along your journey and to cover the cost of building in the cloud. And as you take, go from idea to building out your MVP or minimal viable product, you may want to connect with our community in virtual and in-person lofts. So you can connect with the ecosystem of builders and AWS experts to get questions that can be answered by the folks in the community. Then as you start to deploy and engage with customers, you may want to think about different features that you want to add so you can do that at low risk and no cost by leveraging our machine learning and data labs. And then as you start to hit that inflection point, and it gets really exciting, you're, you're starting to see that traction and product market fit come to place. You may want to accelerate your go-to-market strategy with capabilities such as our AWS Marketplace to have a digital storefront to sell your services out to a global audience, as well as the ability to co-market and co-sell with us through our APN or AWS partner network. And to conclude all, the, all this incredible uh, information I shared with you this morning, and thank you again for the opportunity, some key things to think about and take away from this discussion. One, are you building with security in mind first? This is something that AWS, we pride ourselves on. We have more security certifications than any other cloud provider today at uh, over uh, 89 certifications. You also have 200 services plus to leverage and build out the infrastructure for the metaverse creation and apps that you're doing today. We have a partner network of 100,000 partners that you can work with to help you build and co-create. And we've been doing this, again, since, 20, since 2006, so 16 years of developing cloud infrastructure so we know how to build, grow, and scale, particularly as it, as it relates to building in the metaverse, which requires that scale. And when we think about scale, we've been helping one of the biggest e-commerce companies in the world to do this from the very get-go, uh, a name that you may recognize called Amazon. So I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. I know I'm, I'm between you and a coffee break right now. But if you do want to connect, I'll be around all day. It's been a super exciting uh, telecom conference. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. Take care now.